Well, hello, this is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner here with my co-host, Emily Campagno. And joining us today, Fox News contributor and board-certified physician, Dr. Nicole Sapphire, former RNC deputy communications director and vice president of COIN, Cassie Smedley, and former New York congressman and gubernatorial candidate, Lee Zeldin. He came so close here in New York and changed the game for a lot of Republicans. Great to have you. We begin with the House's investigation into the Biden family's business dealings reaching a new level now. An impeachment inquiry could be next. Hunter Biden's former business partner, Devin Archer, also reportedly his bestie, is now set to be interviewed by the House Oversight Committee next Monday. He reportedly plans on telling lawmakers that Hunter Biden put his father and then Vice President Joe Biden on speakerphone with business associates at at least two dozen calls. But remember, President Biden swore he had no knowledge of Hunter Biden's business dealings and claimed he never spoke to his son on the matter. I did not know he was on the board of that company. I've never discussed my business or their business, my sons or daughters. I never discussed a single thing with my son about anything having to do with Ukraine. I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business. But as the story has evolved and investigations, so has the White House's response. Just yesterday, Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre seemingly offered a nuanced, different answer. She didn't even answer the question that was asked. Watch. I've been, I've been asked this question a million times. The answer is not going to change. The answer remains the same. The president ha was never in business with his son. I just don't have anything else to add. Notice, she only said President Biden was never in business with Hunter. She didn't mention anything about knowledge or involvement in Hunter's business dealings. Knowledge, which the president said he had none of. She skipped that part. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is weighing in on the Republican Biden investigation, and he thinks the probe could result in an impeachment inquiry. This president has also used something we have not seen since Richard Nixon, used the weaponization of government to benefit his family and deny Congress the ability to have the oversight. I believe we will follow this all the way to the end, and this is going to rise to an impeachment inquiry the way the Constitution tells us to do this, and we have to get the answers to these questions. Lee Zeldin, is he on target with that? Yeah, the business is Joe Biden. So th this family business, which is corrupt at its core, doesn't pass any smell tests. Joe Biden can't say that he doesn't know what his son is up to. The business is Joe Biden. Why was Hunter Biden hired by Burisma and these other places in the first place? Why is all this money flowing to the Biden family? It is because of Joe Biden. I think that this is one of those potential damn breaking moments. If you're going to have a House committee, this is a far cry from, you know, Jerry Nadler and Adam Schiff being in charge of committees. You now have Republicans investigating and Devin Archer coming. If the committee's doing a good job answer, asking the questions and you're getting good, tight answers, uh, you might have a lot of progress going and you're seeing more of the mainstream media outside of it. Fox has been covering this the whole time. Even others who have been on the other side trying to cover for this. Now they're starting to recognize we can't avoid this any longer. Well, you can't because you have multiple whistleblowers. You have, you know, the the FBI document says that there are 17 tape recordings. And we haven't heard them as a public, but there is a build of evidence. And Emily, when you see that sort of thing and you're investigating, flip side, your job is to hold the president accountable in a political stance, which really is what impeachment has become. What do you make of this next move, potentially, by McCarthy? Um, I think, to Lee's point, it's absolutely the natural next step. I worry for the fourth estate's coverage of it. I worry whether the average American has true access and true insight into the evidence that we've been presented with so clearly for so long. And I think that that's where the politics come in, in the voting sense. It worries me that this administration continues to get away with obfuscating exactly what this whole issue has been from the beginning, which is selling the president and then vice president and access to him. And for a quick moment, if I may, just to focus on Hunter Biden's artwork, you know, this is exactly the frankly nefarious, but also again, that opaque aspect, which is what was so troubling to the American people to begin with. And yet this administration said, oh, hey, there's going to be no problem whatsoever. Every purchase will be behind closed doors. But as a former uh, um, 
advisor said for the Republican Party, well, people don't buy art to hang in closets. They buy it to hang on the wall, meaning they show off who they bought it from. We have recently learned that Elizabeth Naftali, a real estate investor and philanthropist in Los Angeles, purchased one of Hunter Biden's artworks. Eight months after his first show, she was appointed to a very prestigious commission by President Biden. We don't know when the details were of when she bought it. She was recommended, they said, by Pelosi. But the point is the questions it raises, the clear questions about conflict yeah. of interest and the influence peddling. And now that the questions are in the millions and the phone calls are at 24, the, the sheer volume is exhausting. And that's why this impeachment, that's why the natural evolution, the transparency is so crucial. It's hard for us to ignore, Emily, when someone shows us who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, I mean, if you think back to that 60 Minutes interview where Hunter Biden did not deny using his dad's name to go forth in life, he told us who he is. They've shown us who they are. Now it's time to take them up on that offer of evidence. Yeah, it's like everyone else has been covering up for them while they've been showing us who they are. And now the people who have been covering up are like, okay, well, we're kind of out of places to cover up for you. And it, the dam is breaking. I think that's a good point. And while some would say, you know, the Democrats are trying to say, oh, an impeachment proceeding would be a distraction, but the American people deserve this transparency. We're glad we're getting in the Oversight Committee. Thank God Republicans have at least one arm of the legislative branch right now. Otherwise, who knows what Hunter Biden would do, be doing right now? Because the bigger picture of this is what position does that put President Biden in and our country in when he's out there negotiating on our behalf on the global stage? Yeah. We're compromised, potentially, because who well, does he owe what to whom? Well, right now, there's a war going on between Ukraine mm. and Russia. And a lot of the dealings that have been reported and what Republicans have unearthed have been dealing specifically with that country and Hunter Biden sitting on a board and one of their premier energy companies with no matching resume to have that kind of a job. So look at where we are with Ukraine mm -hmm. today. Another 400 million went out the door. We're not getting the TikTok on what we're spending on that war right now. So you've got questions for a lot of reasons. But where is the president on Ukraine? Well, that's a great question. And all he continues to say is that we are going to continue to support Ukraine. He's even breaking with other um, with other nations in some of the things that he's sending to Ukraine that, you know, some people are like, well, we wouldn't recommend doing that, but that he's doing that. And he's losing some Democratic support because of that. But I want to go back to what Emily said. She said the evidence when it comes to you know, the shady dealings of Hunter Biden, I mean, they're clear. I mean, they've continued to build up, build up, build up. But think about the press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre. She has such contempt for the American people, the way she talks to us, her constant sighing and eye rolling. I've been asked this question so many times and my answer <laughs> doesn't change. Well, yes, it does. And where's the journalistic integrity of the other people in the media saying your answer has changed and the American people deserve to hear? Anyone who is crying for President Trump to be impeached because of the conversation with the Zelensky and interference should be decrying the, the same thing when it comes to President Biden. And if they're not, they're not being loyal and they're not being honest to themselves. Well, yesterday, I didn't realize it, but my tweet was in real time and watching her. And others pointed out, why isn't Harris Faulkner in that room? And I said, <laughs> well, because I'm in my office in New York, but I can see from here that something migrated in her answers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.